So my first story is about marketing and about uh, giving your title of your presentation something that will grab people. So I uh, speak about marketing, about how to drive people to your website or to your business. And I was asked to make a, a, group, a series of presentations in Latin America. The first place I went to was Colombia. And they said, what should we entitle this? And they had decided to call it Creative Marketing, 10 Ways to um, Raise Your Visibility. So they sent out an, uh, an announcement, and they had 25 people sign up. Uh, about two weeks before. So I said, what I want you to do is I want you to change the name uh, from that name to Trumping Trump, how to beat the Donald at his own game. And so we changed that name to that. And within two weeks, we had 475 people sign up and they had to have it in the biggest ballroom in Bogota, Colombia. And what was even even cooler was that the uh, sponsor was a money management firm, was so happy about the uh, turnout. They were really unhappy two weeks before when they only had uh, 22 people. But as I was speaking, people were still coming in. The total ended up being 565 people that showed up. They sent um, a woman who was the third runner up in the Miss World contest to be my uh, guide around uh, Colombia. And what was even funnier was that my driver was there and as I am preparing for the speech this beautiful woman is walking towards me and he said, my God, she's gorgeous. Do you know who this woman is? And I said, no. She's one of our biggest soap opera stars. And I thought, wow, that's crazy that this woman's coming to hear us speak. She comes all the way up to me and she says, I'm yours because her English wasn't great. And my driver pitches back and he goes, and he bites his hand and I go, oh my God. He said, you're the luckiest man all over the change of a title of a presentation. You're getting the third runner up for Miss World Contest. So it was all about having a name that really grabbed people that would drive them in. The second story is that the state of Pennsylvania had always wanted to create an entrepreneurial climate for artists in the state. And they had run uh, seminars and other programs, and they just weren't really getting a lot of traction. So I said, why don't I interview artists and find out why they're not coming to these events? What could we do uh, that would help them become uh, entrepreneurs? And so I interviewed a group of artists uh, from around the state, and I found out that they didn't know anything about writing business plans. They never heard other artists who were entrepreneurs hear their stories. They never uh, were comfortable with business content like reading Inc. Magazine or Fast Company. So I came back to the state and I said, I think I have an idea here. Why don't we create a website that you can develop a business plan online and we'll ask them questions and they'll fill those questions out and it will automatically upload. And why don't I interview artists around the state who've been able to successfully sell products and ask them about how they went about doing it. And then let's take uh, business content and change it so where they're comfortable and we'll put kind of information that artists can relate to about marketing, sales, management, and so forth. So Sam McCall was the Secretary of Commerce at that time. And he goes, look, we'll give you $50,000 to go and build this website. And what we would like is that we're hoping that we'll get 500 artists who will join the site during the course of the year. So I said, I, I think we can achieve that, achieve that. Maybe we can even do a little bit better than that. So we put the site up, and we put out one press release, just one press release that came from the state. And I said, I don't know if this is true or not, but say that we're the first state to ever support artists online, and that we have this robust website to teach artists how to become entrepreneurs. So the state was a little bit worried about saying that. And I said, look, look on the internet. The internet never lies. I can't find anything on the internet that says that any other state has done something like this. So lucky for me, the woman at the in the Department of Commerce, she went along with this, sent this out. So the site goes live. I go to sleep. Next day I come up, I'm thinking, okay, maybe there'll be 10, 15 people that access the site. 2,200 people signed up in the first day 
and our press release ended up going worldwide. That was translated in German, Chinese. There were people from all over the globe. By the end of the month, we had 21,000 users that were using this site uh, to get information. And the lesson I had learned from that was never assume that you know what the market wants. The easiest thing to do is actually talk to the market, ask them questions, find out what would be valuable to them, and then create something that's around the concepts because they owned it at the end of the day and they felt good about it. And we got so many emails. Like, I could not respond to all the emails that I was getting because I was getting 500 to 1,000 emails a week from around the world, people asking us questions. And we were being interviewed by everybody around the country. I was surprised. I had high school classmates calling me from all over the country that saw me in the Tennessee and, and Montana, all these publications. It must have been six, 700 publications that wrote about us. So that's my two quick stories. Great job.